All right, hi, I'm Jennifer Abuzahab. I'm a pediatric endocrinologist from Children's Minnesota. And I really want to thank the FPWR and uh, for the opportunity to share some of the information about this new trial and also for all of your attention and willingness to participate in a variety of trials that are going on because I really feel like it is a really exciting time for research for um, Prouder Willie. Uh, I've been a peds endo in Minnesota now for 18 years and have patients that I've watched grow up and uh, throughout the years and it's just really fun to have things to, that are on the horizon that can potentially help and just to get more answers I think. For me, that's the biggest part of research is to get answers. So um, this study is looking at dioxide choline controlled release, or DCCR. I'll refer to that the rest of the time. And, and really, um, this is a drug that we've used in pediatrics for children with uh, hyperinsulinism for a long time, so we recognize the safety profile of it. This is a controlled release tablet, so it's a little bit different formulation, but of a drug that we know. And, and to, think about why we use this drug, I'm just going to go into a little bit about um, some of the hormones and integration pathways in the hypothalamus. And so I think when you think about all the hormones that run around your body, I like to think of them as text messages maybe, and the hypothalamus itself is sort of the LTE network that integrates all those text messages and helps you decide feeding and energy and behaviors and, and pull them all together in a cohesive fashion. And really, we're going to focus today on a very small part of the very small hypothalamus, or probably the arcuate nucleus, and uh, neuropeptide Y and a goody-related protein um, interactions and how they regulate feeding and energy balance. And so we know that these are appetite stimulatory neuropeptides and that the arcuate nucleus is very important for integration of all the other peripheral satiety and, uh, and appetite hormones and how you integrate all of those peripheral signals into the coordinated balance of how hungry you feel and how much energy you're expending. We know that prader willi patients have a loss of the SNORD116 or small uh, ribo, sorry, small nucleolar RNA CD box uh, 116, so you know why we name it SNORD. Um, that that's a paternally imprinted gene. It's lost in patients with prader willi syndrome, and, and by losing that, then they have higher NPY expression, and that's part of the hyperphagia and behavior problems that are seen in prader willi We know that um, these proteins are also regulated by the potassium uh, ATP or KATP channels, and because diazoxide affects those channels then, um, it affects the secretion of neuropeptide Y and AGRP in the arcuate nucleus and then will decrease the secretion of those peptides and therefore decrease hyperphagia, improve fat, and probably or hopefully improve behaviors as well. Oops, sorry, I went too far. So the primary objective for this study, um, in now in phase three, is to look at the change in hyperphagia from the baseline to visit seven, so over the course of the 15-week study. Um, and the and this is, this is the ninth study, so there have been eight prior studies using this compound and a total of 210 patients um, in total in the previous studies. And the secondary objectives of the study to really look at the changes in body fat mass, so looking at DEXA scans prior to enrollment and then at visit seven, and then the changes in global impression scores from the caregiver to look at um, the other markers or pieces of this integrative pathway to see if there are changes in behavior and obsessive tendencies and uh, um, maybe even aggression tendencies or just the obsessiveness. This is, again, a 15-week study. Our goal is to enroll 105 patients. There are currently six centers that are up and running, and there are an additional 10 centers that will be starting. Um, it is a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled, parallel arm study, so none of us know whether your child would be on the drug or on the placebo. The first six weeks is important because the, there's a dose titration, and we know that slow titration of this medication decreases the side effects and improves the safety of the medication. And then patients who complete uh, the 15-week study then are enabled, enabled to enroll in a uh, nine-month open-label extension study. And there's already been one patient now who is um, enrolled over, so has now uh, finished the full 15-week study and is now in the open-label study. And it is just a tablet once a day, so that's the administration. And you can see in the bottom here the sites that are open and then the sites that will be coming soon, so maybe one will be near you. And these are the exclusion and exclusion criteria, just again a brief overview of what what a study is looking at. So we're looking at patients four years of age and older for inclusion. 
They do need to be able to swallow a tablet, um, and they need to have genetically confirmed Prader-Willi syndrome, be hyperphagia, and then because of the questionnaires that we're doing to look at behavior changes, then be in a stable care setting with the same caregiver or consistent caregiver for six months who can complete those surveys. The exclusion criteria really is a weight less than 30 kilos and great, or greater than 135, again, because of the preparation of the tablets and the dose per kilo, um, that's the weight restrictions. And there are some prohibitive medications, uh, really just looking at things that could inhibit CYP450 because that's how diazoxide is metabolized. And any other anti-obesity medications are excluded throughout the trial for three months prior to and then completely during the trial, as well as any uh, weight loss procedures such as gastric bypass, and any medications that are known to prolong the QTC interval, systemic, systemic steroids, and any investigational drugs or devices, again, just for the three months prior to the study and then during the study. And then that is my brief overview. So if um, people have questions, I just want to thank you for your time and for listening. <laughs>